Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Sharon Bonnie. I'm the CEO for the Coalition on Adult Basic Education, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our webinar today, Teach Digital Literacy Based Standards Using a New App Based Course. And in just a minute, I will be introducing you to our wonderful partners, but I had just a few quick slides here. Um, hopefully some of you joined us for yesterday's advocacy April webinar, where we talked about the three asks that we have to deal for the COVID-19 challenges. And I just want to encourage you that those are available on our website, the information there. Super important, it's been important because so many of you are dealing with, um, you know, the loss of being able to deliver instruction face to face needing more resources to reach your adult learners, um, your adult learners not having what they need in terms of Wi-Fi and laptops and, and the like. So just really want to encourage you to check us out, check out those that webinar from yesterday at coaid.org. Also, I, I also want to mention that we have a number of targeted webinars specifically to provide training to deal with the challenges of COVID-19. And they've been really well attended so well attended, in fact, that we've increased our seat count to 1,000 to accommodate as many members as possible. So just want to encourage you to go again to coabe.org and check out the, the webinars that are there. So now it's my pleasure to introduce to you our friends, uh, Vinod Lobo and Drew Robinson at Learning Upgrade. They're our partners and our friends, and they are the presenters for today. And before I go any further, if you could just introduce yourselves for our attendees, if you could introduce yourselves in the chat box and tell us where you're calling in from and how many are there with you in the room. And then also any questions you might have, just put them in the Q&A. Hi, Vinod. Hi, uh, thank you so much, Sharon. Uh, Vinod Lobo here. I'm the founder and CEO of Learning Upgrade and Drew Robinson, our sales director is here. Um, and I'll be turning off my camera so we can get a good recording of the main screen and we'll get started. And Vinod, as you're pulling that up, I'll, I'll uh, read your bio if that's okay. That sounds great. I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay, great. Okay, so I just would love to share with you. Um, Vinod is the founder and CEO of Learning Upgrade, which publishes online courses and smartphone apps to teach English, reading, and math through songs, video, and games. In 1998, he brought together educators, musicians, artists, and programmers to produce innovative, engaging lessons designed to support struggling students in reading and math. Through the incorporation of song, video games, and educational research, Learning Upgrade has helped over 1 million students find a new path to learning success. And then Drew Robinson leads Learning Upgrade sales, marketing, and customer service efforts. He has trained hundreds of teachers and enrolled thousands of students across the United States implementing site-specific plans for fast deployment and measurable student growth. Drew works with each site to address their specific needs and assist in launching each learning upgrade license with training for teachers and administrators. And now I give you Drew and Vinod. All right, thank you so much, Sharon. Uh, welcome to everyone. Um, we have a, a big audience here. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know many of you are at home like Drew and I are and uh, uh, making the best of the current situation. And so we wanted to present digital literacy to you, but also tell you about uh, Learning Upgrade in general for those of you who don't know anything about Learning Upgrade. So first, um, I want to give you a little bit of background about this new digital literacy course. American Library Association says, Digital literacy is the ability to use information and communication technologies to find, evaluate, create, and communicate information requiring both cognitive and technical skills. So digital literacy is different for everyone out there. Some of you are thinking digital literacy is you being able to use Word and Excel and computers and other people, it's smartphones, others it's digital citizenship understanding security and privacy. There's just a wide variety of topics and standards. So our new course covers all of this. And the reason I'm so excited is we started this project two years ago. It's been a real labor of love. We've created 60 new lessons handcrafted with music, with video, with games, with rewards. And you are the first audience that's uh, ever really gonna see this outside of our team. So very excited to have you all here for our global launch of this new product. 
So why is it important? Well, first of all, uh, in the job market, um, digital literacy is no longer you know, optional. It's a requirement at all levels of jobs. We need digital literacy to apply for a job, to respond to the application, uh, to send emails and texts at work, uh, to use social media, uh, productivity apps, you name it. it it's the, one of the defining aspects between someone who's upwardly mobile at work uh, and someone who's not. Uh, but you're also all experiencing digital literacy's need in the classroom right now because someone who doesn't have digital literacy cannot access online learning and therefore is locked out during COVID-19. Uh, we're seeing this in K-12, we're seeing this with adults. Um, students need to uh, access um, online lessons, do searches, send emails, send texts. There is a lot going on. So what's our approach? Okay, first of all, our digital literacy course is part of a system, the learning upgrade system. So we have 22 courses, including English, ESL, reading, writing, and math, uh, GED, and HiSET prep. So our idea is that digital literacy is part of an overall adult basic education solution, where learners have one login for all of these courses, and you have one set of reporting for all of the courses. Um, that's one part of our approach. The other part builds on what we learned during the last five years with the Adult Literacy X Prize. Um, Learning Upgrade was the grand prize winner of the Barbara Bush Foundation Adult Literacy X Prize. And as part of that process, we learned that smartphones are the key to equity and access. Why do I say that? Because as you've learned over these last few weeks, many of your learners do not have laptops, uh, Wi-Fi, you know, um, cable modems, but almost all of them have smartphones. And if you give them a solution that only works on a computer, many of them will not be able to access it. So smartphones are the great equalizer. If you can find a solution that works both computer and smartphone, then uh, um, you can reach all students. So the future is mobile and uh, smartphones, and uh, that is what our new course addresses. So I'm going to get into more detail about every lesson and about the demo, some of the lessons. But first, I wanted Drew to give you a feel for uh, the learning upgrade overall. All right, thank you, Vinod. And uh, you know, I'm just going to give a very brief uh, intro on what is Learning Upgrade. For any of you um, that are, uh, you know, have the app open, there is a Q&A section, so feel free to ask questions there. Julie asks, what is the app you are using and is there a cost? Um, so the app is Learning Upgrade. You can find it um, in the Play Store, in the iOS App Store. It's also available on the web. Um, and everybody here is going to be getting a, uh, you know, free license. I know it's going to share a link in the chat. Um, you can click on that. It's going to be our digital literacy intro post. At the bottom of that uh, post, you're going to see a form. You fill that out and you'll be able to, uh, you know, get a free license. We'll be able to email that to you. So I'm going to get into just briefly what is Learning Upgrade. Um, you know, we've done a few webinars here. So for those of you that are joining, that have joined those other ones, don't worry, we won't be going too far on this. Um, but just wanted to you know, give a brief intro. So, you know, as Vinod mentioned, we have 22 courses. Um, we have over 1,000 lessons, over 10,000 practice questions, and we cover reading, writing, and math. You know, what really makes our course special, and you'll see in the demos in a little bit, is you know the engaging content. So we use songs, video, and games to teach. And the learners, they can learn anywhere. Um, right now, that's all remote. Um, when learners you know, hopefully go back to school um, in a few months, you know, it'll be in class as well. And there's two parts to Learning Upgrade. So we just say Learning Upgrade is a program. There's the student app, and then there's also the learning management system. So let's take a look at the student app first. This is what your learners are gonna see. They have access to all 22 courses. And we design this to look just like they see in their Facebook app, in their Instagram app. They have these circles that represent the courses. 
So in a lot of apps, these are stories, um, you know, these are profiles, um, but your learners are very familiar with this concept of information behind an icon. So we have our English, math, and then you'll see digital literacy, our newest course there at the bottom right. And it's really important that they see this. You know, this is similar to the psychology behind, you know, showing all of the seasons of say, you know, a Netflix show. Um, you get into a show, if you see that it only has, you know, let's say one season and it was created five years ago, you might not have a lot of interest. You know, you'll get through the season, realize they canceled it and there's no more content. What we like to show our learners is, okay, hey, you're starting out on English K, you're starting out on English one, maybe early in math, but look how much more content we have here for you. So they can see their path to academic success, starting all the way from the beginning um, for your preliterate adults, for those that are working on their um, you know, foundational math skills, and then also for your learners that need assistance with digital literacy. You know, so maybe they're working on uh, you know, something else in your school, but they can work on that in tandem with their digital literacy skills. So that's important to show all these courses here, and that helps facilitate what we call binge learning. Similar to binge watching on YouTube or Netflix, um, you know, we have a, a lot of data now, a ton of reports that are showing you know, that when we first launched our app, that we thought we would be um, you know, used in school, and then maybe you know, something that would be done in tandem with other content on the smartphone. And what we've actually found is that we're competing with the more traditional entertainment apps. So you know, one of our hottest hours um, you know, we see from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And that was the time that used to be scrolling through your Instagram feed, you know, playing games, texting, chatting on WhatsApp. And now we're seeing that we have access to our learners at this time um, where they can get on and complete lessons. So these are the courses, all 22. Every single learning upgrade course has 60 lessons. So you're gonna see all 60 lessons for our digital literacy course here. The learners start at lesson one. And the way it works is you click on lesson one, you're gonna have the instruction. So you'll start out with internet basics. After the instruction, then comes the game component with practice questions. And so your learners need to get 100 points on those practice questions to complete the lesson. Now, in order to move from one lesson to the next, they need to get 75% or better. That's considered a bronze. Um, 75 to 89 is bronze, 90 to 94 is silver, and 95 to 100 is gold. So you work through all the way until you get to lesson 60. That's the final challenge. That's a cumulative test of everything they've learned within a course, and it's the only timed lesson. So a lot of you are asking, hey, I see, you know, I, my learners don't need help with one through five. I really want them to just focus on netiquette. And that's okay. You know, we allow instructors to go in and unlock portions of a course or unlock entire courses. And that's for all 22. So if you say, hey, I don't want them to start out with lesson one of English three. I want them to start out on 14. Um, that's okay. Our instructors have the power to do that. And as I mentioned, you know, learning upgrade is all about engagement. We want to grab the attention of your learners and we want to keep them interested. So most importantly, a lot of you are dealing with this now in a remote setting is you might have time on Zoom or Google Classroom where you can meet for an hour, maybe two hours for some time throughout the day. But outside of that, you're really limited to how much you can help with your students. You know, for those of you that might be using a workbook um, or worksheets or a standard book, you know, usually your, work, your learners would go home, you know, maybe do some practice questions, some work, and they'd have that opportunity once, twice, maybe even five times a week where they could interact with a tutor, they could interact with an instructor. But what about now? You know, if they start having some problem with their workbook, you know, the best they're going to get in some cases is the odd answers at the back of the book. With learning upgrade, you know, everything is different. So we have our instruction here, which I'm showing on the left, which starts out each lesson. But then the practice questions on the right, those are also dynamic. And so it isn't just answering, you know, uh, some text on a page. They get to see where all these numbers are coming from. Uh, most importantly, when they do get an answer incorrectly, a voice comes on and explains it to them. We drag and drop to show them where the right answers are. And we give them an opportunity to move back, work on something in a little easier, and have that individualized approach um, where they can answer questions uh, based on their knowledge and ability and continue to scale up. And so that's really what makes you know, Learning Upgrade so much more engaging and so much more dynamic than just a workbook is we don't throw a roadblock up. You know, all of us have had a situation at some point in our schooling 
where we got an answer incorrect and we were at home and you know a lot of us this was pre-internet and you know you were just stuck you had to do your best give your best answer knowing that it may be wrong and then you really couldn't answer anything past that uh, with a dynamic app like learning upgrade we're able to walk your learners through those difficult areas and make sure they understand exactly what it is they need. So next is, you know, Learning Upgrade is available everywhere. So we say the student app, um, it's available for iOS and Play, um, but most importantly, it's available on the web and there's device handoff. So right now, Digital Literacy, we just launched this last week. It's available on the web and it's available on Android. Um, so we're working on our iOS build and we're hoping to have that ready um, for this summer, uh, but web and Android's available now. And that's about 78% of our entire user base is covered there. Um, so for your classrooms, um, that's gonna cover a lot of students in our brand new course. And then there's the teacher LMS and admin LMS, and this is important. So um, all of your learners, you know, they're gonna enroll in learning upgrade. They're gonna have access to all these great courses. But if that's the end of your communication, um, you know, that's kind of lost there. You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, content online uh, where your students work on their own and then there's no feedback for the instructor. And that makes it really difficult for you, especially in this remote setting, um, to provide targeted feedback um, and assist them where they, they might need help. So I'll be getting into the LMS uh, more at the end of our presentation here. Um, I want to hand things back to Vinod. Um, I, that was the quick, you know, primer on learning upgrade. And now he's going to get into more detail on our new course, Digital Literacy. All right, thanks, Drew. Um, so what is this course all about? What you're seeing now is our courses screen, which has all of our courses and um, Digital Literacy is on that screen. So let's talk about the uh, exact format. We have 60 lessons. Digital literacy is included in a learning upgrade license. It's not a separate product. This means that any of you who have a learning upgrade license today, you could click add course and add digital literacy for any of your students. If they're adults, they can do it themselves within the app. And if you um, uh, get a free license, hopefully all of you sign up, um, you can go learningupgrade.com and click learn more on digital literacy. There's a form at the bottom, or you can click on the link here. And then um, you can put students on digital literacy uh, starting tomorrow. Um, so what are the topics covered? So we, we cover devices, we cover uh, data, creating content like Word docs or graphics, communication, security, privacy, digital citizenship, technology. I'm gonna go through every one of the lessons in a minute. Uh, what reading level is required? Now, we wanted to be able to cover topics like digital citizenship and cloud versus local. Um, and so we needed a certain reading level to be able to cover these right. So we say that uh, you need a grade five or NRS five reading level to be able to do the course. If you have students that are way below that, what I would do is enroll them in our English upgrade series, one, two, three, four, five, at the right level, and then have them move up, and then they'll be more than ready to get on to digital literacy once they reach uh, English four or five. Um, availability, as Drew said, is all, all phones except for iPhones, iPads, and all devices um, that can run the web are okay right now. And uh, the iOS is coming soon. We're working on it real hard right now. Okay, what makes our course different? So many of you have probably used some of the resources that are out there for teaching digital literacy. Some are not quite courses, but collections of lesson plans and lessons. So um, basically uh, uh, what makes, this course very, very different is number one, is engaging, it's high interest. Uh, if you've seen our other courses, we use music, we use video, we use voice, games. Uh, our lessons are very interactive and very addictive and people tend to do hour upon hour on their phones and they, they, they can't stop. Um, the second thing is right after you finish getting some instruction, you're gonna get practice 
not just a boring multiple choice test, but interactive practice doing that topic. And you have to get above 75% to move on. So you're motivated to um, pay attention, to answer the questions, to get it done. Third, um, you know, a lot, a lot of digital uh, literacy content is from maybe five, 10, 15 years ago. And it's very computer focused on mouse and Microsoft Word and the file manager and things like that. And as you know, the world's changed. You know, the world's mobile, it's cloud-based. There's things like Google Docs, there's social media. And um, um, we've focused a lot while also doing um, the desktop and, and the old material, we're focused on the new material. Um, our course includes the standards that are in EST, like dig digital citizenship, safety, privacy, net etiquette. Uh, we teach a lot of concepts that are very difficult to learn if you're just kind of sort of hacking away. Um, you don't stop and think about, should I share versus sending a, a document? How do we collaborate as a group? We have alignments, of uh, course, to ISTE and North Star. I'll be going over that later. Um, we have automatic course sequencing. So you don't have to sit there and constantly tell your students, go and do this, go and do that. When they finish level one and get 75%, boom, they move to lesson two. Without any um, input from you, they can go all the way to a certificate and even come back and review the mastery. And then we're integrated into full adult ed platform. So your learners could be doing an ESL course and a math course or a GD, GED prep and digital literacy at the same time. And then finally, Drew will get into this later, but we have extensive reporting. Um, we got time on task reporting. If you have to do that for the state, we can report uh, assessment data, classroom and school-wide data. We can even track a whole district of schools or at the state level. Okay, so let's get into a demo. This, this, we're, this is just clips of a lesson called Cloud versus Local. This is lesson eight on the map of 60 levels. Sandra has to give a presentation at City Hall about adding bike lanes. She wants to collaborate with two of her friends on the presentation slides, but they both live far away. They all have internet access, but she cannot access the internet at City Hall. To get this done, Sandra needs to understand local and cloud documents. Local storage is when documents are saved directly on your computer or phone. You can access those files quickly and make changes without internet access. But because the file is on your device, you cannot access the information from a different device or work with other people to share, view, and edit the files. Cloud-based storage means that documents aren't saved to one device, but to a server that can be accessed from the internet. If you are working on a document that is saved to the cloud, you can access it from any device. Now, it's your turn to master cloud versus local. Where should we put this document, cloud or local, and why? Read this and select the answer. That's right! Select the best storage and reason. Good reason. Pick the best choice. Nope. Justin should store the recipe in the cloud so that he can easily access the recipe from any of his devices. Answer this one. Sorry! Because Jennifer wants to print the phone photos from her laptop, she needs a cloud document for access. 
All right. Uh, that gives you a little uh, taste of cloud versus local um, lesson eight in our overall. So uh, I, what I want to do right now is just go through all of our lessons, because many of you are looking for different things out of the courses. Um, I know one of the questions, by the way, that came through is, can I take this lesson myself? <laughs> so um, you can do that two ways. You can either, once you get your license, sign yourself up as a student. And in that case, you would actually have to go in order and earn your way through the whole course. Or you could sign up for a teacher version. Um, we give you a teacher course, and then you can actually jump around and go through the course uh, a la carte. Um, and you could also use it um, with, your, uh, with your own students. Um, okay, so Drew, are you still there? I'm not sure. Yes. Uh, okay. There we go. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, good. All right, so let's go through the lessons. You will see my screen here? Yes. Yeah. Um, so let's go to the detail of the lessons, Drew, and then we'll um, um, be able to go through each one. So uh, when we begin, we're looking at the very basics. So internet basics is about web browsers. And then when we get into computer basics and phone basics, these are things like uh, the difference between a laptop and a tablet and a two-in-one. Um, the difference between mobile data and Wi-Fi is in network basics and different types of phones like Android versus iOS. Um, we're going to teach about app stores, the version numbers, updates. Um, we get into searching and browsing. Uh, trust and validity is a, is a really great level for fake news and how do you tell whether something you read is, is really trustworthy. Cloud versus local, you just saw. Uh, content types, we get into the difference between video and audio, documents, graphics, um, share versus send. Should I send a giant video file to my friend or upload it to the cloud and send them a link? Um, data storage, flash drives, USB drives, local storage, cloud drives, um, data organization. What's a folder? What's a file? How do I organize my files? Um, file types. PPT, PDF, uh, XLS. Um, filtering is neat when you have a, a thousand emails and you want to find something. Um, text creation. How do you type on a mobile keyboard? How do you type numbers? How do you type symbols? How do you type all caps? Um, numbers and spreadsheets. How do you use Google Sheets? Um, photo creation. Uh, how to take a photo with your phone, how to edit it. Um, graphic creation, uh, documents, which Google Docs, Microsoft Word. Um, audio creation and video creation. A lot of people haven't done content creation much, and this exposes them to it. Game creation and the design process. Uh, 24 is a really important level because um, Coding and programming is such a lucrative field. A lot of people don't understand software engineering and things like that. So hopefully we introduce some people to it and they get interested in it. Um, website creation, um, how to use a kind of WordPress-like website creator. Um, copyright, open resources. Then we get into communication, really critical levels on email, text messaging, direct messaging, posting on social media. Uh, a lot of people don't know the difference between a hashtag and a handle. <laughs> so uh, we have a great song for that, by the way. Um, chat rooms, video conferencing or, or web conferencing like we're doing now, digital identity and net etiquette. Net etiquette is really important for what are the rules of how to behave online, what's expected. Collaboration, how do you work with eight people or six people on the same project? Online relationships, the difference between talking to a boss versus talking with a friend. Um, device protection, content, passwords. Online scams, what's the difference between a phishing scam or shopping scam? How do you protect yourself? Dealing with strangers, health protection, um, things like ergonomics, 
how should you hold your phone? How should you sit in front of a computer? Uh, Cyberbullying, protecting your personal info. Privacy laws gets into things like HIPAA for your health privacy or COPA for your children. Um, advocacy, and now we're getting into digital citizenship. Uh, advocacy, engagement, social awareness, news sources. Digital economy tells people the difference between the old way of doing it, like, like hailing a cab, the new way, ride sharing, um, the old way um, of, uh, of doing everything in the new way, in the digital economy. Global citizenship, artificial intelligence, we wanna introduce people, demystify it. Virtual reality, again, demystify it. Voice assistants, you all know, Alexa, uh, Siri, um, so they need to be able to understand those. Calendars, how do you make an appointment? How do you make it recurring? Um, how do you set a reminder? Uh, travel and job search. The final challenge is a time test that goes through all 60 levels. Um, it, it's a heart pounding time test, but it also makes sure that you understand the material before you get a certificate. So um, that's a quick review of everything kind of in the program. Um, if you go to the, um, I, Drew can put up the link again to the main page uh, on the document. And then you can actually go through at learningupgrade.com um, the full lesson list. Okay, what about the standards? Um, for those of you who don't know a lot about the standards, um, the ESTE standards, um, are more at the broad level, you know, digital citizenship, empowered learner, things like that. And we have a standards alignment PDF, which you can download or look at. Um, so ISTE standards, again, are more broad, more conceptual, more overarching. Um, and, and then we can look at the North Star standards, and those are more nuts and bolts. You know, can you use a mouse? Do you know, how to use Microsoft Word, you know. Um, and I know someone asked what ISTE stands for, and now I'm uh, <laughs> at, a, at a loss, and Drew can look that up really quick. Uh, I, I apologize, I've been to many of their conferences, um, but we'll get the uh, acronym pretty soon here. Um, so those are the two uh, st standards. What I wanted to, put out to all of you right now is that if you have a certain, oh, International Society for Technology Education, much thanks to David Rosen. Yes, thank you, David. <laughs> uh, for all your help <laughs> and uh, for all, all that you do on links and, and everything else. Um, International Society for Technology in Education. All right. Um, but I, what, what I wanted to put out there is many of you have specific standards that you have for um, your state or for your particular application. Please go to learningupgrade.com, click on contact form and share with us your st standard alignment that you need or email us at info at learningupgrade.com. We'll, we're gonna do a lot more alignments, but we need to know what you need. Tell us, okay? And then we'll put them online. All right, we're gonna give you another demo. This is documents. So this teaches Google Docs or uh, Microsoft Word. What are the basic concepts? All right, yeah, just before I hit play here, I'm getting a lot of questions on the link. You know, how do you get signed up? How do you get your free license? So, um, you know, we're sharing the link there, um, but there, you know, if you're not seeing it or you can't click on it, you can go to learningupgrade.com. And in our main menu, you'll see a pilot request link. And also on the homepage, our header will have a digital literacy introduction. Just click on learn more and that'll take you to the page that we're sharing the link to. Um, so we are sharing the link. If you're not seeing that, just go to learningupgrade.com and you'll see two options, pilot request or learn more for digital literacy. Yeah, so hopefully all of you can get signed up because um, Drew's gonna work really hard to get you your license you know, very soon so that you can immediately enroll your learners and get them on digital literacy, but you'll also get access to all of our other courses too um, for the next three months. All right, let's play a demo. This is documents.
Word processing programs such as Google Docs or Microsoft Word allow users to create a digital file called a document or doc file. Documents contain text and images. Some examples are essays, flyers, or reports. Let's process some word processing basics. To create a new document, first choose File New. Type in the file name, the next thing to do. Let's look at the ribbon from left to right. Undo your changes, redo them to right. Change the fonts to make your text look good. Font size changes, letter size as it should. Select the answer. Perfect. Answer this question. Not quite. In the line spacing drop down, select double. What about this one? Incredible. Follow the instructions. Wrong. In the insert menu, go to image and select the picture of the book. Try this one. Sorry. To undo the last action, just click the undo arrow icon. All right, so you know a lot of the questions here in the chat are on getting started, um, free licenses, and then I'm seeing a lot on reporting. How do I report? You know, time on task. How do I track and monitor student activity? Um, and so for the back half of our presentation here, I want to really focus on that. So to start things off, I just want to you know show this. This is our four-step process, and this is something that we utilize uh, you know in all times, but something that we're relying on much more now. Uh, that every single one of our classrooms is remote. So the first thing we do is teacher training. Um, that's an introduction, what we're doing on the webinar today. Number two is student onboarding. And this is the, the most important here. You know, when we're in a remote setting, we don't have that time to have all of our learners into a classroom, into a computer lab, where we can walk them through everything. So we've really streamlined our entire onboarding process to make this as simple as possible. Your learners are able to self-enroll at home and all you need to do is provide them with a single class code um, and a short list of instructions and this is something that's really taken off you know we have over you know close to a hundred thousand lessons completed for learning upgrade uh, since schools went on uh, you know lockdown about a month ago we've added hundreds of adult ed programs and the real key for that is our ability to quickly and effectively have your learners on board from home. So as we've talked about, you know, the number one thing you need to do is click the link in the chat, or if you go to our homepage, it looks exactly like this, and you'll see that learn more button for introducing digital literacy. You can click that, and at the bottom of that page, you'll see a form to fill out the pilot request, or you can just click on pilot request in the main menu there. So I'm going to receive your pilot request email and uh, you know, I'm going to be working through a lot of those. I see that in my inbox, I already have a lot of you um, that have filled that out. So that's great. So I'm going to get working on fulfilling those pilot requests and then you're going to receive an email back from me. And in this email, you're going to have everything you need to get started. So the first thing uh, on our four steps is, you know, we're going to focus on student onboarding. So that's going to be the number one thing you'll see in your email student self enrollment. I'm going to provide you with the class code and then you're also going to have this class code sheet link you can click and that's going to have all the instructions for how your learners can self enroll. You'll click on that class code sheet and you'll see this. You can toggle it into Spanish. Um, you can print this and then save it as a PDF or you can just do a screenshot. If you're pulling it up on a phone or a tablet, you can just take a screenshot and then you can text, email, um, post it to, um, you know, whatever, uh, you know, LMS you're using to communicate with your students. 
Um, but with this single code sheet, you know, you'll see the seven digit class code. And then we walk your learners through the exact steps on how to get started. So I'm going to pull up some screenshots. These are here. You'll see number one, you know, download the app. Number two is click get started. So this is what your learners will do. You know, it's this simple. You open up the app. It looks like this. They're going to click the big orange get started button. After they click to get started, they're going to see our three course offerings. So for those that want to get started right away with digital literacy, they can click digital literacy. For those that might want to start in one of our math or English courses, they can click there. Now they're going to enter their first name and their last name. Student ID is optional. Um, they can enter their phone, email, or if you have like a district ID, you'd like them to have that for. Um, but the real key is this class code field uh, that I have in the box. We'll see here our class code, seven digits. Each of you will have a unique seven digit class code. They're going to enter that class code into the class code field. That's what's going to allow this account to be self-enrolled into your teacher account. They're going to click go there and then we're going to display their username, password and school ID. So this is important if they plan on using multiple devices, you know, if they're logging in with the same phone, this is going to pull up for them. Um, but if they share devices at home, um, if they're going to switch between devices, then they might want to take a screenshot of this um, or they can even write it down and then they'll be able to log in and access that account everywhere. They'll click go. And then they're going to see the course that they enrolled in. So in this case, we're going to start out with our new course, Digital Literacy. But they can also click on any of these grayed out icons to activate them. So if your learner decides to start with Digital Literacy, right away they can say, hey, I want to take Math 4. When you click on a grayed out icon, we're going to show you all 60 lessons. And then there's a bottom button that says Add Course. So if you just want your learners to check out which lessons are available, they can do that. And then they can always add additional courses at any time and work on those. And that's what really helps facilitate the binge learning. Uh, you know, again, you might be working on math and know that you have to get, you know, through your high set math in order to take your high set math test. But after 10 lessons, you're a little burnt out. You know, let me work on some English. Let me work on a couple digital literacy lessons, and then I can go back to my math. So it's important that your learners can work on multiple courses um, and, uh, you know, find out which ones are working for them. So now, you know, step number two is going to be motivating and tracking. So we'll see here, you know, student onboarding, really simple process. Um, you know, we're adding thousands of learners, you know, every week now because of uh, COVID-19. And so this, you know, number two has really become streamlined because every single one of your learners is going to be remote, uh, enrolling remotely. You know, there's no more blended approach. There's no more students in the classroom trying to come up with different things. Our focus is remote, uh, enrolling your students remotely using their own devices. So once you've you know, provided them with the instructions to do that, they're going to start completing lessons. And once they start completing lessons, you're going to want to log in to your teacher account and see how they're doing. So we've provided these instructions in your getting started email as well. So you'll see that first block we have covered, student self-enrollment. Now we're going to be in tracking class and student activity. So you'll see there, step one is to sign in. We have a link to our login page. And then in this email, I'll be providing you with your teacher username, password, and school ID. When you click login, you'll log in using the credentials provided, and then you're gonna instantly be in the teacher menu. So in steps two and three of that block, you'll see that I've provided all the instructions on how to access reports, how to view in-depth reports, um, essentially the greatest hits of tracking. Uh, and so, you know, that teacher training, you know, we try to cover, we have a bunch of uh, webinars on our support page. So if you'd like to go into more detail on getting started, go into more detail on reporting, um, you can view previous webinars that we've put on. Um, it'll give you more details on that. Um, for today, I just want to cover the ones um, that I think are going to be most important, which are also the ones that I provide you with instructions for here in the email. So motivating and tracking, starting out, you know, what's our goal? You know, first and foremost is to earn a certificate. Um, you know, that's the goal for our learners is to complete an entire course. And in order to earn a certificate, you need to, you know, complete all of the lessons, including the final challenge above 75%. You know, you'll earn your bronze certificate, 90 to 94, they'll get a silver certificate, and then 95 to 100, they'll earn a gold certificate. 
Now, as an instructor, we want to make sure that we're tracking our learners. You know, there's going to be, you know, our data shows you'll see, you know, usually about 20 to 30 percent of your learners without ever interacting with them in a remote setting. You'll provide them with their enrollment and they're just going to take off and cruise through a lesson, cruise through the course and earn certificates. Um, those ones we don't have to worry about. The ones we want to take a, a closer look at and keep an eye on um, are, is the other half of that. You know, the 20 or 30 percent who don't get started, the 20 or 30 percent who might be struggling initially in a course. And so what I want to do is show you some best practices on how you can work with them, um, but most importantly, how you can identify. And so number one is going to be the student monitor. And so in our teacher menu, um, I, again, I provide instructions for this in your email. But you log into the teacher menu and it's organized into five tabs. The first tab is for students. It's just called the students tab. So this is the main report. It's just called the student monitor. You can pull this up and it'll give you a live look at how your entire class is doing. We'll abbreviate the courses on the left. So these students are in English one. Um, as we've talked about, every learning upgrade course has 60 lessons. So you'll see the lessons displayed from left to right, all 60. You'll see the bronze, silver, and gold. But what you want to keep an eye out for is anytime you see red. You know, our learners that get gold certificates, bronze certificates, they're doing great. They're working. Um, not a whole lot we need to do here. What you want to keep an eye out for is when you see learners that have red, you can hover over any one of these tiles and get live um, feedback on exactly how they're performing. So let's say we hover over a red and it says they've, you know, worked on this one time and they got a 72%. As an instructor, don't worry about it. You know, they'll play that lesson again, get above 75% and keep going. You wanna keep an eye out for those that have played it multiple times and have a low average score. Um, that might be a lesson that they're struggling with. And in a remote setting, it's worth sending a text, uh, maybe having a phone call, maybe a Zoom meeting and working with them on that content. The second thing you wanna look out for is a student that's falling behind. So you'll see third from the top and third from the bottom. Um, third from the top, I'm not too worried about. There's a lot of gold lessons in there. That might just be time on task. They're not spending enough time. Third from bottom, most of those lessons are bronze. So that might be an issue there. Maybe English one is a little bit too difficult. If I hover over those bronze lessons and see that they've played each one multiple times, um, they might be struggling there. And I might enroll them in English K or I might um, encourage them to enroll in English K. Say, so, hey, let's work on the fundamentals, uh, you know, enroll in a course that's before this one, and then we can work our way up to English one at another time. So that's the student monitor. And once you've identified an area there, um, then you can pull up an individual course report in the courses tab. So here we're going to see an individual course report for our newest course digital literacy. And as Vinod was talking about when he was breaking down the lessons is we have these subject areas and we have one of these uh, subject area tables for every single course. So here it's device, information data, you see the others there. So we're gonna give you a breakdown for those subject area scores. You can see where the initial score is, then you can see where the average score is. Um, so you can get a quick idea of maybe a content area they were struggling with initially. After you look at the subject area scores, you're gonna see this graph below. And similar to our student monitor from left to right, you're gonna see every single lesson displayed uh, but similar to the student monitor where I say, hey, focus on the red, focus on learners that are falling behind, in the student level score graph, focus on any valleys that haven't been filled in. You can hover over any data point to get the same data you got on the student monitor, but in the orange, you're going to see the high score. In the blue, you're going to see the initial score. So a good example is lesson 19. Obviously, this is exa exaggerated um, for the demo, but here they got a 0%. And then the next time they played it, they were able to work all the way up to around 90. So that's a valley that's been filled in. What you want to keep an eye out for is if you see some 75, 76, where they're just getting by and they haven't filled those valleys in, those could be lessons that they're struggling with. And to confirm that, you can keep scrolling down after the student levels and you're going to get a table with um, all of this data. So you're going to see, you know, the exact date that they played this. So this, you know, was in early March. You'll get to see the total number of minutes that they're spending on the lesson. You'll see the times played. Shorthand here is just focus on times played in minutes. You know, that's really where you're going to see if uh, one of your learners is struggling. 
so okay, you know, level three, it took, you know, five attempts to get by um, and they spent almost an hour on it. Um, you know, this is really important. And so you're going to get this again for every single learning upgrade course, you'll get an individualized course report for each one. So student monitor course report, that's for, you know, identifying problem areas in a class, identifying challenges for an individual. Now, if you want to look at time on task for a class, um, I'm not going to cover it today, but we also have admin reports. So I say teacher, um, but if you're an admin that's planning on having 10 teachers at your site do this, we also have admin reports and everything's available for admins as well. Um, we have a fully featured admin account, um, but I'm focusing on the teacher side of things. So I'm going to refer to this as tracking time on task for a class. So if you're a teacher, you know, the first thing you'll notice is you can set a start and an end date. So this is important if you have to report hours, you know, for the weekend, for the week, for an academic quarter, um, you know, you need to be able to select a start and an end date. Um, you can also get as fine tuned as selecting hours. So you say, hey, I just want to track between 10 and two o'clock on Wednesdays. Um, you know, you'll be able to pull up those kind of reports. Uh, and you'll see here that it's going to be similar to our student monitor, but in a table format now. So we'll see every single course displayed uh, for Isaac here. He's enrolled in English 1, English 3, Math 1, and we'll see the hours played. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll get a chance to look at that. We'll also see when they were, were logging in, um, their average percent. Uh, and then we have some other view options. So by default on this report, every single one of these students, we're going to show a course on each line. You can also do all by student. So if you're only concerned with total time on task, doesn't matter if they're in 10 courses, you select all by student. Now each student goes to an individual row and then we'll give you the total hours played. You can click on any one of those hours link to get session data, um, but we also have a student time report if you need to look at that for your entire class. Again, these are available for admins if you need this site wide as well. So in our session data, we're gonna give you the student's name and then every session given the time that you've selected. So similar here to our student progress report by date, start and end date, our student time report, you can also set a start and an end date, and then we'll show you every single session, every single login for your learners. Um, and yes, Kathy, you can print. You can also, it's a uh, uh, friendly for Excel. So if you need to copy and paste these tables into Excel or Google Sheets, you can do that. And we're also gonna tell you their device. So the student session time report's really important. You'll get a subtotal for their total time on task. You'll see their lesson. You'll see the lesson that they played and then also the device that they used. Then we'll also sum all these up for your class. Um, and then again, for an admin, you can see this for an entire site. So that's just an intro into tracking. We have a lot of powerful, you know, reporting and tracking tools. I suggest, uh, you know, watching one of our previous webinars where we've really done a deep dive on that. Also feel free to reach out with questions if you have some specific um, needs at your site. And the last thing I want to cover is just, you know, celebrating student success. Um, you know, so it's one thing to just offer praise, you know, it, that goes a long way. Uh, text message, email when our learners are, are you know, completing lessons. Um, but we also have something external. So that's the CoAbe Learning Upgrade Challenge. And it's a little bit of a competition where we take a look at the top programs, top teachers. Um, we take a look at, uh, you know, the students that have the most hours, lessons, and certificates. And then we, uh, you know, offer prizes for all of that. So it's a little bit of added motivation. Um, for those students that are slow starters um, or students that are, you know, completing a lot to give them, you know, even more motivation. Um, but we're going to have prizes available. So we do this on a quarterly basis. Um, and so the current challenge ends on April 30. So everybody getting started now is going to be entered into the challenge that starts on May 1st. So starting May 1st, we're going to be getting uh, the next challenge started. And every single one of you, all of your progress will be tallied there. Um, and then for those of you, you know, asking about pricing and getting started, um, you know, we'll also be talking about the mobile learning fund and some emails going out getting um, over the next few weeks and months here um, about, uh, you know, providing some funding for those of you um, that don't have the site funding. So I wanted to finish with about five minutes here. Um, you know, just say thank you everyone for attending. We had a big group of about 400 and you know, see a ton of questions that are in the Q&A and in the chat. Um, I hope we've gotten to most of those. I tried when Vinod was speaking. I know Vinod's answering uh, a lot now, but in the last five minutes, and we can stay extra, 
Um, if there's anything else Vinod and I can answer for you, uh, we'd be more than happy to do so. So uh, Drew, um, first of all, thanks for all your questions and really apologize if we missed anything in the chat window. There was a lot coming through. Um, we answered 67 questions in the Q&A, <laughs> so we tried our best. Uh, apologize, but you can always reach us at info at learningupgrade.com or our 800 number here. Um, and the one of the things I wanted to mention is a lot of people were asking, oh, I already have a Learning Upgrade license. How do I upgrade or how do I use this? Um, boom, you have it, meaning you can just go on, hit Add Course, and add digital literacy. If they're adults, they can click digital literacy ourselves, uh, uh, yourselves, or the student can do it themselves. So uh, you already have it. Um, there's not anything extra for that. Um, you, you can just uh, use it. Also, I wanted to say to everyone that this is a work in progress. Um, digital literacy, we're gonna have to change it for a new technology. We're also gonna have to improve it based on all of your feedback. So we want to collaborate with you. Please let us know what you need. Do you need certain alignments? Are there certain lessons you think we should add something? Are there changes you want to make? Um, share it with us. We really want to, to hear your feedback. Um, I think there's a poll coming out. I think uh, Sharon may have put up a poll. So um, you can fill that out. We really appreciate that. Um, and uh, any other questions that you saw, Drew? Uh, not seeing, I think, I mean, they were coming in so quickly. I hope we answered all of them. Um, but just, uh, you know, again, for any of you that maybe didn't see the link, again, you can go to learningupgrade.com. You'll see the main header there, Introducing Digital Literacy. Click on Learn More. At the bottom of that page, uh, you'll be able to fill out a form and uh, I'll get those emails and we'll be able to set you up with a license. Uh, and then it, uh, you'll have my email when I send those out. So feel free to respond, you know, info at learningupgrade.com with any comments, questions. Um, and again, um, you know, on our support page, uh, you will be able to find previous webinars on getting started and some things that are more in detail on, uh, you know, the, the granular part of our reporting. And if any of you would like to, uh, you know, have more questions answered, feel free to reach out to me on questions about reporting as well. I know there were a lot of questions in there. Sometimes it's easier to be able to show you um, outside of the webinar. Um, so if any of you would like to set up a time, uh, maybe I can do a reporting webinar in a couple weeks once you guys have gotten started. I know a lot of people, Drew, were asking about, uh, can you get time on task reporting? And we definitely do that, meet the yes. state, state requirements for a different kind of reporting on time on task and documented time. And we've been approved for that in Texas and in, um, in Virginia. Uh, Virginia and uh, North Carolina. I think we're, we've got to uh, specifically get approved for digital literacy in Texas, working on that. Um, thank you very much to everyone for joining. I know we're just hitting 12 noon. And also thank you to Sharon for giving us this opportunity. It's been our pleasure. Thank you, Vinod and True, and thank you everybody who took the time to join us today. We truly appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Bye now.